you want to talk about a topic that's going to be super dated uh, because game <laughs> one is in a few hours, but yeah. the Lakers Nuggets series, which I think we're both just enthralled by and kind of annoyed that we have a deadline for something else related to the lottery that happens during the middle of it. If anyone wants to peek behind the curtain, uh, <laughs> what, what are your overarching yes, about that? Overarching. Where's Jamie? Is he watching? How, what are your over your biggest overarching thought heading into this series? Um, I think the most interesting aspect of it to me is how different this will be for both teams. Again, like that's always the most fun thing for me is, you know, when the Warriors went from the Kings to the Lakers, it was just like, it was almost a different sport. And, and I think that's going to be kind of the same way for this series. I really just want to see, tell me, tell me what you think about this. Jokic is the playoff MVP, right? I think that's, you know, it's been Butler and it's been regular season MVP, but that's neither here. He's up right. So, (laughs) but like, I would argue that I think Anthony Davis, because of what he does on both ends is like not that far from Jokic in terms of like current postseason value or impact. I think in the warrior series, Davis was just, he was the guy that changed the whole series throughout it. Just where is he? How do we scheme around him? How do we get him away from whatever we want to do on defense? And then how do we keep him off the offensive glass? How do we guard him? Like he's just was the guy in that series, which is wild in a series that involves Steph Curry. Cause usually he's the guy. I think it was in fact Davis that required the most like attention during that series and his team won the series. So that's a factor. So I'm fascinated to see what Davis can do in the Jokic matchup and you know, how much is he going to guard him? I, my assumption would be like the vast majority of the time. What do the nuggets do to like the warriors did to try to make Davis be less of a factor than he is You know, the, uh, to make him, to minimize the extent to which he is a factor, which means like pulling him away from the basket, involving him in a bunch of other actions. Like how do we tire him out? How do we keep him away from what we're trying to do? How do we go away from him on the other end? Um, I just think it's going to be really interesting to see Jokic tested, you know, by, I think probably the guy that I'd put maybe second now among postseason Ooh. players in terms of impact. Just, it was hard to watch that warrior series and not come away from that think thinking anything, but, like this guy is just like such a he's such a problem and he's not even shooting jumpers like the 2020 version but he just his defensive impact is so massive and his offensive impact is like ridiculously great but like secondary which just speaks to how much of a difference he's made defensively can he and lebron hold up we've asked it every series like i just think that matchup the which is like of course we're going to start with jokic versus davis as like the most interesting thing no but that's like i don't know what else to do other than start there cuz everything else you talk about tactically personnel wise matchup wise kind of spirals out of that i feel like cuz that that's the real meat of the series so i thought i had a novel thought and i should know better and then i listened while i was uh at the gym humble brag at the gym i listened to the thinking basketball preview on this series I listened to uh, the dunker spot and I listened to the Zach Lowe segment on it. And they all asked the same question. I was, how much of this matchup do we actually see? And my thought was AD is so good defensively that you can put him on Jokic. And I think he could do a bunch of other stuff, but like if you put him on Jokic in the post, or if he has to guard Jokic from the outside and Jokic decides, Hey, I'm not going to work from the outside. And like, I'm just going to try and cut up the Lakers defense from here. It does pull him away from all the other stuff that he's able to, to do and like maybe they won't spam pick and rolls because they just want Mm -hmm. davis locked on to nikola Jokic, and so i kind of wondered well do you have davis help off like guard aaron gordon or somebody and then do all the other stuff that he's doing and try and get away with you know do you try jared vanderbilt he normally defends like advantage creators but do you try jared vanderbilt do you try lebron on Jokic? and then on the flip side i was like if you're Jokic, i think there are ways if, if they're going to just stash AD like at the top of the key, give him the ball, Jokic can defend that fine. Mm-hmm. But if they're going to get AD the ball in motion, like yeah. getting him going downhill and he can either go right into Jokic catch and go that way, or he's behind Jokic. I'd worry about Jokic getting into foul trouble. And if you're the nuggets, do you try and avoid that by pulling him off Davis? And so I, in my, I'm like, maybe we just won't see this head to head matchup as much as we think. And I'm like, I bet you no one's talking about that. Everyone's fucking talking about that. So, uh, no, hold it real, real quick, I, real quick. I, I just my response to that is because I think you're right. I think my assumption that well they'll just match up the whole series is maybe oversimplified. But like, if not Davis, 
I think Jokic will just put Vanderbilt in the basket over and over and over. And you're going to have to send doubles. And when you double Jokic, you've just conceded defeat because he's going to find an open shooter. And, and if you like, I don't know what else you do if it's not Davis, because I think the way that this series ends the quickest is Jokic dominates in the lane, which is where Davis is supposed to prevent you from dominating. So like if the Lakers concede Jokic getting post-ups, getting deep position, just bullying smaller guy, that's like, you're just playing from behind a little bit. So that's why I, I, I take your point. I think we'll see a lot of moving pieces matchup wise, but I think the nuggets would be ecstatic if Davis spent a bunch of time elsewhere. Uh, and other than Jokic. Well, and then also, if you're the Lakers, the trickle-down effect is if you don't have Davis, or excuse me, for the Nuggets, if you don't have Jokic on Davis, also, so you have KCP on LeBron at yeah. that point, instead of Aaron Gordon, and so that mm-hmm. creates all this type of issues. But you mentioned Jared Vanderbilt. I'm wondering if this is a Jared Vanderbilt series. Always a question. Is, is it, or do you just skew smaller with, well, we're going to play a whole bunch of like Dennis Schroeder, Austin Reeves, uh, and D'Angelo Russell? together just to make it harder on the nuggets to, so because look, if they're able to stash anybody on Vanderbilt, like the, the identity of their entire defense is just able to remain intact, which is, Hey, we're yep. going to mostly play ultra aggressive, like uh, at the, the level of the screen. And then we're going to trust everyone behind Jokic to just make these scrambling rotations and help and make all the right decisions, which they've done to their credit. That just gets a lot easier when you're able to leave Jared Vanderbilt wide open in the corner, as opposed to, okay, well, if that's, a Reeves or a Russell or a shooter, like they're going to be able to attack or you just trust them to knock down threes more. I think if Vanderbilt is able to play significantly in this series, it's a pretty big indictment of Denver's defense because what, what you said should be what happens. Like we see it over and over the deeper you get in the playoffs. If you have a guy that you don't have to guard beyond the three point line, that isn't like a pick and roll ball handler or rim rolling big, like that guy just gets played off the floor. And if Denver cannot succeed defensively with Vanderbilt on the floor on offense for the Lakers, like that's a real problem because they should be able to cheat to have advantages to send extra help off of him. And then the other end, it like if he can stay on the floor, not only is that bad news that does that mean Denver's defense is failing despite an advantage, it also means Denver is going to have a way harder time scoring. I do think Denver's offense is so good that they're going to score, and the Lakers have the best remaining playoff defense, but like. If Vanderbilt can play a lot, I think that's a bad sign for the Nuggets, right? Because it, sh- it might you shouldn't be kidding. able to get away with it. Right. Or it just might mean, which would still be a bad sign, that he's, oh, he's shooting like five, right. yeah. nine from the corners every game. And that, that's also an yeah. issue. Uh, um, I, the other thing I did want to mention with this series is I think because that we might see some more matchup reconfiguration than most people are talking about, there are going to be moments where LeBron is going to have smaller guys on where it won't be Aaron Gordon. Mm -hmm. Let's just Mm -hmm. say, and they need him. Like we saw it more. They went to him in the post against the warriors. I think he averaged like five post-ups per game against the warriors, but like his drives. And part of this is his foot. We know he's Mm -hmm. playing on that bad right foot. He went from averaging like over 10 plus drives per 36 minutes to basically he's averaging like seven per 36 minutes right now. The Lakers are going to need him. I think to be more aggressive, uh, especially if they're going to put, if Denver winds up putting smaller players on him. If it's, if your whole thing is like Aaron Gordon's going to be locked into LeBron and LeBron is not a decoy, but like, he's going to like Aaron Gordon's just out of everything else. Okay. And then like, that's sort of a small victory there, but if the nuggets feel comfortable enough, like, Oh, we'll throw Bruce Brown or KCP or even Michael Porter jr. On him for stretches, because we don't think he has that burst. And we're more worried about, we have these sturdy guards in KCP and Bruce Brown and Michael Porter jr. Is like, he's big and long. He's not like maybe super strong, I think this needs to be, and I, I say this knowing LeBron's averaging 25 and five and just shot like 56% on twos. And he caught fire from three. He was at like 39% over the final five games of the series. This needs to me, in my opinion, needs to very much be a LeBron James offensive series. And I feel like the Lakers have relied on, okay, we're a lot deeper at guard with Reeves mm-hmm. and D'Lo and Schroeder than I think anyone ever credited them. But there's also been, okay, well, Hachimura has it going during this. And like part of that is we're taking what the defense can get us. I don't think they're going to be able to rely on that inconsistency of depth in the sense, like they've always had enough, but it never feels like it's the same guy. If yeah. that makes any sense. Right. Well, and you I get a Lonnie it, Walker game and you, right. You, that's, you know, like well, that, that's shout out to Darvin Ham. Who just, yeah. is, it, is this like, is he, is Darvin scheming in his head and knows all this? Or does he just look at the Lakers and like, we have so many guys who you know can play. 
or we're just so imperfect that I'm mm. just going to fucking try things. Or does he actually Why know? Not? Oh, oh, we're, these are our weaknesses. So I'm just, pu I'm pushing the right buttons that no one else is thinking about. Yeah. So I had a thing on LeBron too. I think you're totally right. Like not only does this need to kind of be a LeBron aggressive series, just because the Lakers are going to need to keep pace scoring wise, it's going to be difficult, especially in the half court. But like, it needs to be, I don't, I don't know how you necessarily accomplish this because Denver has been working on avoiding these situations all season. Can you coax, you know, when Jokic comes up to the level of the screen, which I think he will more often than not, if LeBron is a ball handler, can you coax a switch or two? Or maybe LeBron gets to drive downhill at Jokic. Maybe. Can, like that. That's something you're going to want to hunt. Again, the Nuggets will drop a lot. They'll do different stuff in the pick and roll. But I think you want to look at that. The other main thing is like the Lakers during the season, second most, uh, second most percentage of their points in the restricted area of any team in the league. So like they score a ton at the basket. That's just a huge strength of theirs, right? This shaky three point shooting team suspect like LeBron's been cold. You mentioned that all this stuff. If this turns into a three point shooting series, I think that's bad news for the Lakers. They need to get stuff at the basket. And in conjunction with the Lakers loving to just pile up points inside Denver, second worst in terms of opponent accuracy in the restricted area, 71% been a problem all year it's not all on Jokic. some of it's schematic so it's some been of it's... better during the postseason i don't know if that's but have they played a team that's tested that weak point yet? i, I, I would argue they probably haven't yeah so that's the recipe for the lakers succeeding because they they must find ways to score in the half court that's that's been their half court offense has sucked in the playoffs <laughs> they will depend on transition offense right the problem is the nuggets don't run as much as the lakers do in the playoffs but their points per possession in transition is better than the Lakers. So if you up tempo this game, maybe you tire Jokic out. But if I'm Denver, I'm good with that. I'm his good arms with that. might get a little red, but he'll be good. Right, his arms will be red. His perfect. His maybe some shoulder tightness from outlet passes. <laughs> but so if if the Lakers want to run, Davis and LeBron get tired. Like, and the Nuggets are just better at that on a per play basis anyway. So the the Lakers have to score in the half court. They have to score at the basket. And that's going to fall on LeBron more than almost anybody else. So it's not just a LeBron James series. It's a LeBron James has to score, has to make a bunch of layups basically in the half court for the Lakers and, to score enough to keep up. And the, look, the whole, and I know he deviated from it a little bit in the last year, but like they can't have like the odd numbered, even numbered AD games either. I think no. what's critical as good as he's been, even at times on offense, like it, I mentioned this before, you need to get him the ball moving. I will say these two teams do not, despite what the Nuggets personnel might suggest that they're able to having Michael Porter Jr. Jamal Murray, these are the looking at the semifinals alone last and second to last in three point attempt rate. So like yeah. they're not relying on a ton of threes, but if it does become a, a perimeter based series, I do think that favors the Nuggets. What I also do not think helps the Lakers is they are at their, not their most dangerous, but like two of the fundamental elements of their offense are, we are going to get to the foul line mm -hmm. and we are going to get out in transition. The Nuggets do not foul. So, you know what? If it's maybe they're allowing parades to the rim, that might change. They might foul there. But if they're not sending the Lakers to the foul line, their offense is going to be good no matter what. Mm -hmm. They're going to get their defense set. So, the Lakers probably aren't going to be in transition as much. And so, I think you could reasonably go into this, and this might be an oversimplification, and just say, well, I think that Denver, just by default, is going to disrupt, not not because they're doing anything wild defensively, schematically, or super effectively, but they're going to disrupt two of the core tenants of the Lakers offense, which yep. is, oh, okay, that's awkward. And then you kind of have to deal with the counter to that. It's, we already think this might not be a Vando series. Like, is this going to have to be a Malik Beasley series for the Lakers? Because they're going to mm -hmm. need that three-point volume and that outlet in the half court. He's just disappeared from real minutes. And I think the idea of Malik Beasley is absolutely important to this team. It's just, I don't, I'm not saying that he's an X factor. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there are more problems that the nuggets are going to cause for the Lakers than vice versa, which is probably a spoiler alert as to where my pick is going. But anyone who listens to this podcast knew where that pick was going anyway. Right. I, I think the only other aspect I wanted to talk to you about before we get to the pick, uh, unless you have something else is how much does Max Christie play? Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> just, just, just enough. Probably. Um, I'm concerned about the Nuggets because the Lakers defense is really good. Like we haven't we haven't said enough about how good their defense has looked, especially with Davis in the game. I think, you know, Jokic is going to play a ton. That's just that because it's the playoffs and the deeper you go, the, the more that needs to be the case. I think if the Lakers can just dominate, like hold the Nuggets to just a preposterously low 
level of offensive efficiency when Jokic is not in the game. I think that's some I'm looking for ways I'm like tipping my hand too here, pick wise looking for ways for like, what does it look like if the Lakers are successful? And I think a lot of that has to do with the nuggets just almost literally don't score without Jokic on the floor, which is not that hard to imagine uh, because the Lakers defense bottled up Steph Curry to, for the most part, like they've just, the, the defense is good. It's great. Like that's just what it is. Um, everybody's playing hard, even though they're kind of small you know, when they play, especially the three guard looks with Schroeder and even D'Lo and, and Reeves, like the, it's working. So that's one way I could see the Lakers having success. Do you have any other, you know, we've talked about LeBron scoring at the rim. We've talked about, you know, a couple other things before we get to the pick, how else do the Lakers sort of create advantages or exploit advantages? Have we, have we covered the bases? Cause well, I think, I think the one you touched upon right now might be most critical. It's just like when you kind of look at those, non Jokic minutes, which I assume will just be aligned. Like there'll be the non AD minutes aligned with the non Jokic right. minutes. Uh, maybe LA is willing to play Davis more than Denver's willing to play Jokic. That's not an, a comment on Jokic's conditioning. I just think we could see, you know, like the Lakers kind of, Oh, LeBron James is 38. Like we're just going to play Anthony Davis 48 minutes, but the lineups, you mentioned both these teams playing small LeBron against the nuggets going small, like with Jeff green and Aaron Gordon as their de facto centers. That, could be huge because yeah. the Lakers have been better without LeBron James on the court during the playoffs. I don't, um, I don't think, I don't, I, I don't think that that's going to, you know, that, that's not an indictment on LeBron, but I'm saying like that might flip this series. And the thing that I'm wondering is if you're the Nuggets, and I get why they do what they do, where they don't want to stagger Murray and Jokic too much. I, I, I understand that, but like when we have the Murray non Jokic minutes. Why don't we see, I know you're concerned about the defense. I'd like to see MPJ and Murray more in those stints together. And it might come at the expense of defense, but if the Lakers are also going to be playing small, why can't you kind of roll the dice yeah. on that to kind of just see, well, can we score better with Jokic? And look, they've had pockets during the playoffs where they've done well without Jokic, but during the final, I think it was four games of that Phoenix series, like they were a minus 24 with Jokic off the court in like in, in 36 minutes with the Jokic off the court, they were outscored by 24 points. They were minus three without Jokic in the game where they just embarrassed the fuck out of the Phoenix in game mm -hmm. six. Um, So I'm looking to see if that's where the Lakers can really create an advantage is during those non Jokic minutes, because having LeBron without AD, thank you, Siri, having LeBron without AD is so much different than having Jamal Murray on right. his own without Jokic. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, do you want to make a pick? I, I, my pick I feel is, like I know. My pick is Nuggets in six, partly out of obligation because I think I picked them to win a title at the preseason. I will say this is the third straight series I'm picking against the Lakers in. Wildly uncomfortable about it. But I just, I look at this team and the Nuggets and I'm just like, they have it. They have everything they need this year. And the Lakers, I think you can very much pick out and say they like they're really good. They're better than expected. But this is just this all feels like unsustainable. And I feel like they haven't run into I, the Golden State Warriors are this great team in theory, but I just feel like they haven't run into an elite team just yet. And I think the Nuggets are going to be able to expose them more than any of these other teams because they are such a steady fucking force when it comes to we're not going to foul. And our offense is going to be so good that we're going to get our defense set. And as mm -hmm. I mentioned before, I really think that that's going to derail two of the core tenants of Los Angeles's success. Yeah, I don't have a ton to add to that. I think I think that interplay, the Nuggets offense scoring just, you know, as much as it wants and setting the defense and forcing the Lakers to play a pretty, you know, a pretty bad brand of half court offensive basketball swings it. I'm going Nuggets in seven. And that's mainly because I think Davis has the ability to almost make as big an impact as Jokic does. And and with that being potentially, in a best case scenario, I think Davis could be close to Jokic's level, will not outplay him. And then that leaves LeBron versus Murray, MPJ, like the rest of the Nuggets supporting cast, which I think is probably better on the top end, but not quite as deep. I don't know. Se seven feels okay to me. Um, I just think ultimately the Lakers haven't, faced an offense this good in the playoffs yet. And I think maybe the fact that the Warriors uh, weren't quite as good as maybe, like you said, they're theoretically this great team. 
I'm not sure we're sh- we can be certain that the Lakers defense is as good as the numbers say. And I do think the offense is probably about as bad as the numbers say. I wanted to, and I feel like I kind of danced around asking you this before. Do you think that AD's defensive impact becomes muted at all if he is tat- saddled with that primary Jokic assignment? I it's think different. that's why that's so much of what that's also another way that you could disrupt the Lakers is just by not like because when you look at Anthony Davis in the Warrior series specifically, where it's like he's coming up to like he's going to drop back or he's going to mm-hmm. but also close out or like vice versa. And I just if you're locked into Jokic, I just don't know that he's able to guard the perimeter and protect the basket all at once. Yeah, I think there's that's a great point. I think it, it would be difficult for because of the personnel differences for him to have as big of an impact. But I do think he's someone that Jokic is going to have. Like, if it is Jokic that has to guard him, like, man, that's a load, right? Like, that his mobility, his his athleticism, if you get pick and rolls working where he's – Davis is one of the best role men ever. Like, I think – They just don't it, use him like that all the time. Which that's is the thing. Like, can, can you yeah. find ways to do that? I think – I guess what I mean to say is Davis has the capacity to almost equal Jokic's impact or maybe equal it if everything breaks absolutely right. And so that's why I think it's a long series. Um, it could just be that the Nuggets are unstoppable offensively and the Lakers run out of juice because we've been, or at least I've been questioning whether Davis and LeBron can hold up every series they've played so far. So maybe this is the one where they don't, and it is a short series. But I think you got to hand it to the Lakers a little bit that if you made it this far. Uh, I think you're, you're still, you've got what it takes to at least make this very interesting based on where, you know, six and seven games, right? That's, that's pretty solid for a team, for a playing team and started two and 10 or whatever it was. <laughs> 